So having a baby changes everything. And for some parents, the physical and mental uh, healing from a new birth is an ongoing process. So this morning, we are shedding light on postpartum depression and what you can do to feel better if you are struggling. What you thought were the baby blues seems to be lasting longer than expected, or maybe you're not feeling like yourself anymore. We're talking to new moms, even dads, who might be going through postpartum depression or PPD. In this week's Healthy Living, we're talking with one local mom who says her PPD took over for quite some time before she finally did something about it. When everything felt really hard was just, I wish that I could go away. Giving birth to a baby is supposed to be one of the happiest times of your life, they say, but it's that way of thinking that can confuse new mothers who often feel shame because they're not happy. But it's not your fault. You're not a bad parent. You might just be going through postpartum depression or PPD. It is uh, caused by hormonal fluctuations, uh, lack of sleep, uh, and other underlying conditions. Uh, it is a character flaw. Your friends or family might have told you it's probably just the baby blues. Baby blues occur in almost everybody. Um, you're tired, you're not sleeping, you have some mood swings. Uh, you may have anxiety about taking care of, you know, a baby for the first time. But when those feelings last longer than a couple weeks and start to intensify, that's your red flag. Intense anger, anxiety, difficult uh, sleeping. It can last for months afterwards. Other things to watch for are uh, withdrawal from, from others, uh, not interested in caring for the baby. And of course, the thing we worry about the most is uh, suicidal thoughts or ideations. Rage is how Holly Cooper referred to what she experienced. The Seattle mother of three says PPD started four months after her first daughter was born. It was, it felt very uncontrolled um, when like the anger would come. And so I yelled at my tiny little baby children a lot and I knew that wasn't normal and I knew it wasn't me or how I wanted to talk to my kids, but it just like, I couldn't tame it. She reached out to her doctor at the time, but says they offered little to no help. So she relied on friends for emotional support. Looking back, it was like, I wish that I would have sought more help. Um, whether that was therapy or medication, um, a lot sooner. The second time around, when Holly's son was born, she got help right away and was prescribed Zoloft to help manage the depressive episodes. And despite her initial reluctance to taking medication, she says it made a world of difference. I was kind of on my high horse of like, I can do everything right and fix my postpartum depression. I can eat right, I can exercise, I can you know, have special bonding time with my baby. I can carve out time for my husband. Like I can try to do all the things that they say help with PPD. But um, at the end of the day, like medication was kind of the one thing that really brought things full circle. Doctors say there are risk factors for PPD, like family history of depression, complications with the baby and health issues. Research shows if postpartum depression goes untreated, it can lead to chronic depression. So doctors say, don't wait, seek help right away. Believe it or not, one in 10 men also can suffer from a postpartum depression episode, which is most common when their partner is experiencing those similar types of symptoms. Now, doctors say treatments don't have to be medication. You could try meditation, cognitive behavioral therapy, or support groups. And there's also a PPD hotline, and that number is there for you on your screen, along with the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Again, don't be afraid to ask for help. Reach out. Because trust me, you will feel so much better once you get that help. Yeah, and for more on our healthy living stories, just head to our website, q13fox.com, and click on Healthy Living.